Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of this four part series. In the first video we made this, this is a snap mould and from that snap mould we got a rough plaster cast of that side of my face. Let's have a look what we do next, um, enjoy. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we've got this rough plaster cast of the side of my face there. We're going to sculpt a prosthetic around about here, but we're going to clean it all up. We're going to make a mould and we're going to cast this out in polyurethane resin. Just to mark this on here so you guys can see what I'm thinking about, this is roughly the diameter of the prosthetic piece that I plan on sculpting. I'm just gonna go under the eye, up the side of the nose there, which is great so that we've got plenty of space there around the mold. Don't forget we need to make the flashing on here. So from there it's... Um... Just mark that there. So roughly about that much space for the prosthetic and the flashing around it. Okay, so we know how much space we need. The next thing we need to do is think about squaring this up. So I'm going to give myself a decent amount of space so I can put keys all the way around. So I want to make sure I've got enough space around the edge of the prosthetic where I can, so I can put keys. I usually just do that a couple of centimetres or so all the way around. And I've just marked that up there roughly so you can see where I'm going to cut on these straight lines. So to cut this, I'm using one of these fancy Japanese saws. These things are super sharp and they cut on the pull. So if you're going to use one, just be super careful. But we're literally just going to uh, slowly, this is obviously sped up, but slowly we're going to cut through there as neat and straight as possible. So essentially what, what we're doing here is removing material we don't need, trying to reduce the amount of rubber we use for making the mould and of course resin for casting it. So let's not forget to take the tip of the nose off here. We don't need that, it just means the mould will be way too deep and thick if we leave that. For that I'm using a Japanese rasp. These things are incredible. Get them off um, Amazon, I'll pop a link below. We're just gonna rasp the end of the nose off there. This is kind of giving us enough space to pop a little key in there possibly. Okay, so now this is ready. The next thing I need to do before I do anything else is I need to make sure I seal this. This is just a kind of habit I've got into. Because we're using oil-based clay on this, I probably don't need to, but I thought I'd show you it anyway. If you're gonna use water-based clay, this is critical. Plaster is super porous, so that's gonna draw the moisture out of the clay. And if you take your time, it's just gonna dry the clay out like crazy. So for this I'm using dark shellac and I'm just going to cover the whole surface of it and let it dry. And I'll pop another layer on there. You'll see when it's fully sealed. So you can see here it's not fully sealed. Up at the top we've got some shiny bits and then just down under the eye and around the nose it's still dull so we just need to stick another layer of shellac on there and that should be enough. So once that's fully shellacked and everything's sealed in we're just going to leave that overnight for it to fully fully dry. Okay, so I'm going to clay this up using this. This is Sculptex Extra Soft. It's really great for doing flashing, claying up, all that kind of stuff. It's super soft. And what I'm going to do around here is I've already got the plaster cast mounted on a bit of clay. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go around the edges, get it all clayed up, get it all nice and neat. You might be able to notice there I'm putting a slight angle on that. That's the known as the draft angle. That's really important to consider that because later on when we're demolding things, if you don't put the draft angle on there, it's um, there's a good chance demolding can become a bit of a problem. So 
I'm just continuing there to clear this up. I actually trimmed a bit too much off there, so I'm just going to reclay that again. So it's really important to make sure everything's neat and tidy. This is not just an aesthetic thing, it's also showing pride in your work. And it just means that you're going to get a good clean mould and a good clean cast. So you can see there's a couple of little keys on there, they'll become apparent in the next video. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to box this up. Normally with this I would use foam core, but I just thought I'd be fancy and use these things. I know these as being called clink walls. They're very difficult to find. These have actually been manufactured specifically for my workplace. These are made out of nylon. Nothing much sticks to nylon, which is great. They're great for making um, box molds of all kinds of shapes because they're 100% adjustable. So you can do tiny little molds or you can do whacking great big molds. So in order to use those, we're gonna put the first one on there, just sit it in place roughly. And the second one you can see here joins up there. And on with the third. My desk is way too small, so I had to pause for a second there, make space, but there's the fourth. So you get the idea and you can see that they're super adjustable. Cool, so to hold these together, we're just gonna use these quick clamps. It's just really easy to do. Clamp them together and we're all good. One thing that we must still do is we must hot glue this and seal around the edges because the silicon will pour out. So I'm just gonna go around with a bead of hot glue very quickly. So there's a really good way of working out roughly how much silicon you need. To do that, you just need a ruler and we're gonna measure the width, the length, and the depth of this box. And we're gonna times the width by the length by the depth and that will give us the right amount of silicon. Silicon that I'm using is the same as what I used in the first episode. It's a pretty quick curing silicon and we're just gonna slowly pour that in. And there we go. So this is the next day. I'm just going to demold this, which as you can see, proves to be a bit harder than I thought. So I'm going to yank those walls off. I couldn't get these ones off, so I ended up having to just pull the mold out. You can use some uh, alcohol or lighter fluid to remove that hot glue. And there we go, so we've got the mould, and the next thing of course to do is just to trim all that up and make sure it's all nice and neat. We don't have any of those flappies. There's our mould. The next thing to do is we're going to actually cast into this mould. So the resin I'm going to use here is Smoothcast 300. I'm also going to add some of this filler. On its own, the smooth cast will shrink a little bit. So this filler is called aluminium trihydrate. You can buy it from Bentley's. It's uh, Eurofill 7. And uh, what it is, it's a white kind of sandy powder. It bulks out the resin, so you're not using as much, but it also helps to disperse the heat as the resin cures, meaning it's not going to shrink as much. So I'm going to do equal parts of A, B and the filler. And I'm going to pigment that with some So Strong Blue. So put a little blob of So Strong Blue in. We're going to mix that in thoroughly. And then we'll put the filler in that. Give it a proper good mix. Make sure it all mixes up. You'll see in a minute why. And then we'll put the third part in and that's all mixed. So ready to pour. There's the mold and we're just gonna pour that in slowly. You can see also here I'm using my gloved finger and I'm just rubbing it into the edges there to make sure it all gets in. Okay, so we continue to pour the rest of this resin in. Very proud of the fact that was the exact right amount of resin. So what you will find generally on these types of things is you'll find you get this kind of foamy bubbles on the back. So one way you can get rid of that is by using some mold release. This case is Ease Release 200. Just spritz it on there and it'll burst those bubbles. The mold release gets rid of the surface tension. 
So here you can see the resin curing and you can see it changes colour quite dramatically. This is sped up a little bit, but it's, um, it's pretty exciting to watch. This is known as the bloom. What you want to do is you want to wait till the resin is 100% cured and it's cooled down and it's ready to demould. There's those marks on the back there. This will come back to uh, scar me for life because on the back there's those dark marks and there's also dark marks on the front. So I think what that is, is I haven't mixed that aluminium trihydrate in properly. So just make sure that when you're mixing it, you 100% mix it, you get rid of these because those did have wet resin in there and you just don't want that. And that's about it. For, last thing we need to do is just clean these edges up. They're really, really sharp. Give them a good clean. I just use a scalpel there and scrape the edges off. You can use sandpaper or whatever you've got. So we've taken our plaster cast, we've molded that and we've turned that into a resin sculpting core. And there we go. So, okay, so in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to sculpt the prosthetic and we're going to flash that up and we're going to mold the prosthetic. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget, subscribe, like, share, all that other stuff that people generally tell you to do. Yeah, see you soon. Bye.